Today we're going to be making a English slash Irish classic recipe. We're going to be making a shepherd's pie, but using mashed cauliflower. So a big divergence there. And then also classically, I think you use lamb, but we're going to go with ground beef. We have a large head of cauliflower here that I just chopped up. And since we're going to be making a mash, you want them pretty small. We're going to steam these until they're really soft and tender and they'll make a creamy smooth mash. So we're just going to add them to our large pot. We're going to fill this up with about a half inch water and then we're going to pop it on the stove and let it bring to a boil and then steam. I'm going to cover it with a lid. We are going to get the heat on high because we want it to boil. We want the water to really just steam this cauliflower, make it super tender. So now to my favorite part, the filling. We're going to be doing ground beef, as I mentioned, and then we're going to be doing celery, onion, and some carrot. You could throw in some green beans. Any veggies really will work, but I think this is more like a traditional route minus the peas. So I'm just going to chop these up. Now we're going to do celery and you can do as little or as much veggies as you want. And then lastly, we're going to do half of a small uh, white onion. We've got all our veggies cut up. So we're going to set this aside real quick and we're going to get our ground beef browning in a large cast iron skillet. So we have just a little under one and a half pounds here and you can optionally add a tablespoon of fat if you want coconut oil, ghee or something like that. Or you could just toss this in because this is 80 20. So it's pretty fatty already. And then as this cooks, you're definitely going to want to break it up into crumbles five to seven minutes until it's really cooked through. We can check on our cauliflower here. Okay, that looks good. So we're going to want to let that steam for about five to seven minutes until it's really, really tender. And then you can test with a fork to make sure it's as tender as you want. So let's do that. It's tender, but not enough. Let's let it go a little longer. One thing I forgot to chop up was some fresh garlic cloves. So you can use like minced garlic for this dish, but I think, you know, with something that you're already using fresh vegetables, you're going to be using quite a bit of seasoning. I think the, the fresh garlic cloves really add a lot. So I'm going to just dice up two to three here and we'll add those with the veggies. So the ground beef looks just about done, but the cauliflower is definitely done. So I'm going to pull that off the heat and I'm going to let this cool for just a couple minutes before we get it into the processor to make our mash. With the ground beef basically cooked all the way through, we're going to add our vegetables and the garlic cloves and our seasoning. So let's get that going. So the temp should be medium high right now. We're going to add in our veggies. We're going to want these to cook down until tender, probably five to seven minutes. We're also going to go in with some salt. We're also going to do some black pepper and then we're going to do thyme and rosemary. So fresh would be ideal, but we have some dried on hand. So we're going to go with that and you can always taste and add more salt or whatever you want really. All right. So it's been about five minutes. So we're going to add the remaining ingredients before we make that column mash. We're going to do one cup of broth. We have chicken broth, but you can use beef broth. You can use vegetable broth. We're going to do two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. This is one of those surprising ingredients that really just adds a lot of flavor, like especially to meatballs. I like to use it one gram per teaspoon of sugar. So we just added six grams of sugar. So you can actually leave this out if you want. You can dial it back, but it does add a lot of great flavor. A tablespoon to two of tomato paste. Make sure it's fully incorporated and then we'll continue to let it simmer and thicken a bit. You want the liquid to reduce. So we're going to let this simmer for about 10 more minutes and we're going to make a cauliflower mash. So ours steamed long enough that the water had already evaporated. But if yours doesn't definitely drain the cauliflower before you add it to your food processor. So we're just going to add all of this. We're also going to add two tablespoons of room temperature butter and two tablespoons of room temperature cream cheese, two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. This is going to make it so creamy and delicious. Then for our seasonings, we're just going to do salt, pepper, garlic. You can do fresh garlic cloves if you want. You could do minced garlic. We're just going to go with some garlic powder for convenience. 
And you can always taste test and add more salt. I usually have to do that. We are going to add in some sharp cheddar cheese. Probably like a quarter a cup to a third. Now let's puree this. That looks smooth, that right? That looks nice. The filling is done. The cauliflower is done. All we have to do is assemble and bake. So we have our oven preheated to 400 degrees. So you want to get that going right now. And we're just going to pile this on into our casserole dish. This is a pretty large one. You want at least two quart casserole dish. We got our filling down. We're going to do our topping. Maybe we went too big on the dish. If you want like a thicker layer, go with a smaller casserole dish and then you'll have like a nice thick layer of each. Now all we have to do is top this with some more cheese, of course, and then we're gonna pop it in the oven. So we're gonna get this in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes, but definitely check on it. The cheese will be melty. So we'll check on it at like 25 minutes. All right, guys, this looks great. Just out of the oven. You can still hear it sizzling. And this was exactly 25 minutes. So we took it out about five minutes early. I've also changed my attire, put my hair up, pregnancy life. We're not gonna let this cool because we don't do that in this house. We're just gonna scoop some out. Oh man. That's a big bite. Fire. Mm but so good. So the veggies are really tender. The meat, like you can taste like the fattiness from the 80-20 ground beef. And then the mashed cauliflower is perfect. It's creamy, it's cheesy, it's smooth. So it's a perfect contrast to the filling. So I highly recommend you guys make this. Make this for your family. They're gonna love it. It's an old classic and you wanna check the recipe link down below and exactly how to make this step-by-step. Step. You can meal prep this also. This will serve great as leftovers. The mashed cauliflower doesn't like get bad at all in the, in the fridge for like a week, I would say. So make this, let us know what you think. We'll see you soon.